Hey guys, this is this is Noam with a 2D data recording uh, at Chakwala comparing my lap with a World Superbike rider around the track going clockwise. Uh, the previous video that I did has uh, created a lot of different questions um, uh, specifically about this particular situation that we're seeing here in turn 12. Um, basically what we're seeing here in turn 12, I'm in red and the World Superbike rider is in the light blue is at this, at this point in the track in turn 12, I'm leaning almost 55 degrees with 72 miles an hour, and he's le leaning 51 and a half degrees with almost 78 miles an hour. So I'm leaning more and going slower at that exact moment, and he's leaning f uh, uh, not as far, so, and more miles an hour. So a lot of people kind of uh, ask me, like, no, could it be because, uh, you know, this guy weighs only 120 pounds, like soaking wet, and, and you know, could it be because him and the bike are lighter? Is that why he's able to negotiate a turn faster than you, like at this particular instant, uh, with less lean angle? Or could it be because he's hanging off the bike like a little monkey doing the MotoGP style that we all see on TV? Could that be why... He has less lean angle and more speed, and you have more lean angle and less speed. The answer is no, because 2D data recording does not actually calculate the bike lean angle. It calculates what I call the effective lean angle. So let's dive into it. This will be perfect because when, when, when we analyze data and for future videos, we're going to talk so much about lean angles because it's the only way a bike turns. If you look at a car and the steering wheel is straight, you could think like, well, how do we turn a car? Well, everybody knows we've got to turn that steering wheel, right? It's the only way the car will turn. So same with a bike. Uh, we have to lean the bike and that's how it turns. And since racetracks are so much fun, composed of all these turns and all these corners, you know, it's it's the the science of leaning and measuring the lean is going to be such a recurring uh, topic that we should go into it in a little bit more detail and have you guys understand <clears throat> what are these lean angles that the 2D data recording and aim as well what 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 are they actually okay so let's go ahead and dive into it I drew some diagrams and let's let's go to it okay uh, on the first on the first uh, picture here, so we'll call them one through four, where number one is the one on the left side, number four is the one on the right side. On the one on the left side, we have a tire here. Uh, imagine it with a bike uh, at zero degree lean angle, so it's it's not leaning at all. It's going to go straight forever and ever. And this symbol here represents a center of gravity. Okay, so very simple. On the second second picture here. We have a bike that is leaning exactly 45 degrees from the from a completely horizontal uh, track surface. So if we look at it from behind and we get out, we t take a picture, get out our pro protractor or whatnot, and we measure, and we could see 45 degrees. This bike, the tire is leaning 45 degrees, and the bike is leaning for 45 degrees. And because the center of gravity is directly over the tire aligned with the bike, we could also kind of imagine that the rider is actually sitting on top of the bike. He's not hanging off. He's not doing anything. So that's why the center of gravity remains directly above uh, the tire, just like in figure number one here. Okay, so this is 45 degrees lean angle. And this is what I call bike lean. So let's use those terms from now on, bike lean versus effective lean. Bike lean is what it looks like from behind, and this is exactly 45 degree lean angle, okay? And that, that that's gonna look this way. Uh, now, effective lean angle is the lean angle from the, con the tire contact patch, where it actually touches the ground to the center of gravity. So we could see that in this figure number two, we have 40, about 43 degree lean angle, right? Because the contact patch is a little bit more over to the left and it goes and crosses where the center of gravity is. So we have less lean, effective lean angle than bike lean, okay? Now let's stress our minds a little bit and do some kind of mental uh, exercises. Let's imagine that this tire was infinitely thin or really, really, really skinny, like a, a racing bicycle, 
okay? So where would the contact batch be? It would be actually right there around where my mouse is, right around where the actual bike lean is. And so if the, the tire was infinitely skinny, we would have an effective lean angle of also 45 degrees and a bike lean of 45 degrees. Now, if we make the tire really, really wide, like a 200, or if such thing existed like a 250 or, or something really wide, what would happen? Well, you could just imagine and visualize it that this red line right here, the contact patch would start more to the left. And again, it would have to intersect with the center of gravity. So maybe we would get something like 40 degrees of effective lean angle while the bike itself is leaning 45. Okay, so again, to give you guys a little hint, the 2D data recording, uh, when, when it shows lean angles, it shows the red lines, not the black lines. Okay, let's move on to the, the third figure here. So here, we could, I'm showing that the center of gravity is moved over to the left because I'm simulating uh, the rider hanging off the bike. That being said, um, we got to understand that a bike weighs 400 to 400 and 50 pounds and and us as a rider could could weigh anything from let's say 100 to uh, 250 pounds but nevertheless we don't even weigh as half as much as a motorcycle so when we're hanging off the bike okay let's say two feet we're totally exaggerating it we're trying to look like Marquez two feet off the side the left side of the bike we didn't move the center of gravity two feet we moved it a foot if you weigh 200 pounds. And if you weigh 100 pounds, you moved it half a foot over to the left. So you're, don't give yourself too much credit. You're not moving the center of gravity all that much. But for the purpose of this, this diagram, I moved it a whole bunch to show you what happened. So we moved the center of gravity to the left. We still have 70, uh, 45 degrees of actual bike lean, but the effective lean angle is about 50 degrees from the contact patch to the center of gravity okay so i think that you guys are all still with me because i think i was being pretty clear let's go on to the fourth one this one is just for fun a bike that is straight up and down zero degree lean angle we hang off to one side we create an effective lean angle of 10 degrees in this scenario this bike would actually be negotiating a kind of a left hand turn it wouldn't be like you know race track speeds or anything but it would slowly be making a left hand turn okay so let's go into another diagram and go into a little bit of math you guys are going to hate me so i'm going to do this really quickly okay so on the left side here i'm showing I want you guys to imagine a motorcycle or a car let's start with a car because no matter how good of a rider you are if you're watching this or not I believe that we are all of us are, are are more natural when it comes to cars especially because we could feel the g-forces the lateral g-forces in a car and in, in, in a motorcycle we cannot um, so if you're in a car and you're gonna do circles in a big parking lot okay just circles with a constant speed so you're gonna have just enough gas to maintain the speed you don't want to be decelerating you don't want to be accelerating a very standard uh, uh, thing that we can imagine doing so we're gonna be our, our steer steering wheel is gonna be turned to the left as you could see here and we're gonna be turning and turning and turning and turning now as you as you add speed you're going to feel your body wanting to go over to the right side. So we're turning left, <clears throat> excuse me, we're turning left. And as you add speed, you're going to feel your body turning, uh, kind of wanting to go to the right side. If you hang a string from the ceiling or from the mirror and uh, like string up like a little marble to it or a coin or whatnot, <clears throat> you're going to see that string kind of going over to the right side, especially as we increase our speed. It's going to dangle to the right and stay to the right the more we increase speed or the more we decrease the radius. But let's go over some of these figures right now. So right now we're going to do a, a 100 meter uh, radius turn going left, it doesn't really matter, left or right, and we're gonna do it at 70 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour converts to 112.6 kilometers an hour, and that converts to 31.3 meters per second. We gotta go for calculations to metric guys because 
uh, we're going to talk about G's, lateral G's. And G's are inherently metric because we call them 9.8 meters per second squared is 1 G. So we're going to go metric here. So we're going to do this this left hand turn over and over and over uh, at 31.3 meters per second. So to measure lateral acceleration, we do velocity squared divided by radius. Let's go ahead and do that right now. This is not hard math. So, so we got velocity squared, so 31.3 squared, so times 31.3, divided by our radius, which is 100 meters, 9.79. And then we want to, con so that's 9.79 meters per second squared of lateral acceleration. If I want to convert it to G's, which stands for gravity, gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So I'm just going to divide it by 9.81, and we get 0.998 G's. So if I round it up, it's a 1G turn, okay? It's exactly a 1G turn, and it would feel like 1G no matter what we're doing. If we are able to run that fast or be on ice skates going that fast around 100, uh, 100 meter, meter radius going 70 miles per hour, you're going to experience exactly one lateral G, 9.8 meters per second in, in, in lateral forces. Okay, That converts to 45 degree lean angle, and it always does. It always does whether, again, you're on a bicycle. Uh, again, you're going to be going 100 meters radius, 70 miles per hour. You're going to be doing 45 degree lean angle. Uh, the string that I was telling you guys about uh, that's hanging from your mirror and you got like a little marble dangling, it's going to actually move to the right exactly 45 degrees, okay, if you're in a car. If you have a cup of water, uh, in the car that is not not is just like let's say half full the what that what the water would look like is it would lean to the right exactly 45 degrees lean angle uh, an airplane above you that is gonna do circles right above you with a hundred uh, meter radius uh, at 70 miles per hour obviously a small Cessna or something like that would be doing exactly 45 degree bank turn so this never never changes. It's just how physics works. Uh, let's go over to um, this one right here. So if we're going to increase our speed from 70 miles an hour to 91 miles an hour, so we're going to go like 21 miles an hour faster, right? You could imagine in the car, now that string is going to be pushed to the right even more, right? And your body is going to be pushed to the right even more. And let's do the calculations. So 91 miles an hour is 40.7 meters per second. So 40.7 squared times 40.7 divided by 100 meters divided by 9.81, which is a force of gravity squared which is 1.688, so 1.69 so 1 G turn, which equates to 59 degree lean angle. And of course, look at our nice little steering wheel here. We have to turn it more. Actually, that's wrong. In a car, we wouldn't actually need to turn it more. We turn just exactly the same. So my bad there. So how did I come up with these numbers? Uh, how do I? How did I know that 1.69 g is, is 59 degree lean angle? How did I know that 40 that 1 g lateral g is, is 45 degree lean angle? Uh, I'll go into the why in the equilibrium between a motorcycle and the force of gravity later. It's that's going to be really annoying to you guys, but I'm just going to show you the math. Here's a scientific calculator. It's built into Windows. Make sure it says scientific here. Make sure this up arrow is there. Make sure here it says degrees. So that way we see this inverse tangent right there. So all we have to do is just put how many lateral Gs we're pulling. One, inverse tangent, 45 degrees. Okay. If we want to do a 2G turn, inverse tangent, it would be 63.4 degrees. For this particular 1.69 G turn, 1.69 inverse tangent, oops, I'm sorry, 
1.69. Definitely doing something wrong. 1.69 inverse tangent and 59.3 degrees of lean angle. Very interesting, right? Uh, I hope you guys agree with that. So let's keep going a little bit. So why do we hang off the bike then, right? I mean, the way that, going back into the 2D real quick, so these lines, uh, when it measures lean angle, it's actually calculated not by a special device that I have on these bikes that measure the bike lean. Actually, the 2D data acquisition, I don't have a sensor for that. That would be... Um, that would be like the the sensors that they have on airplanes that give you like an artificial horizon, uh, like a gyroscope. I don't have that. How two D data recording and also your aim system will calculate lean angles is by GPS and speed. Uh, GPS, you know, it's calculating at a certain hertz, like twenty times a second, twenty hertz, or maybe you have an antenna that's doing fifty. 50 hertz, which is 50, calculate, 50, 50 measurements per second. Either way, when you have GPS data, it's very easy to derive from that GPS data what radius you're getting. Okay, So this goes back to this wonderful uh, chart that I made. Oop, where is it? This one right here. So it, it can calculate your radius at any, any given point, and it can calculate your speed, obviously. It's GPS at any given point and it derives your lean angle. There is no other lean angle that you can have, but it is important to understand that it's deriving the red line, the, the angle between the contact patch of your tire to your center of gravity. So there could be a situation where this world superbike rider right here has, okay, again, I have 55 degree lean angle, and that's the red line, like I showed you guys before. That's the effective lean angle. I have 55. He has 51.7. It could be that my bike at this point is leaning uh, 50 degrees. Okay, the bike lean is 50 is leaning 50 degrees. But my effective lean and the and the, the lean angle that the 2D data recording is is calculating is 55. Okay, and it could be that the world superbike rider, his his bike lean is 45, and but he's hanging off so much on the bike, off the bike that it's measuring 51 because that is the radius and the speed, and that is the derivative effective lean angle that occurs. Okay, so why do we hang off the bike? I gotta get to that part. Okay. There's two schools of thoughts on the whole thing, and I'm not. I'm gonna kind of piss you guys off because I'm not gonna give you, you know, which one is better and which one's worse. I'll just give you the pros and cons to each one of them. Okay. First of all, a lot of people think that we hang off the bike because we're gonna run out of tire on the edge. That is not true. Okay. It. Um. I drew some diagrams here. Here's a tire at zero degree lean angle. Okay zero degrees, here's a tire at 45 degrees, okay? We could also see that we actually, at zero degree lean angle, we don't have a large contact patch. And at 45 degrees, we have more contact patch. Take a look at your tire next time, and you can kind of see that. Pay attention, because the, the motorcycle tire designers have done this on purpose. The more you lean, the more contact patch you're gonna have. But if you keep going to, let's say, 60 degrees, you lean quite a bit, you're gonna go to the very, very edge of that tire, and if you keep leaning, you're gonna run out of edge, right? I mean, that's what all of us think. Oh, I better hang off the bike and get rid of some, you know, five degree bike lean, get rid of that, so that way I don't run off, fall off the face of the earth and run out of lean and run out of tire. No, that doesn't happen in real life. In real life, this, your tire is not made out of wood. It's made out of soft rubber filled with air, and there's so much force is pushing down into that tire, okay, that this is exactly what your tire ends up looking like at 60 degrees. Not like this, running off of the edge. It flattens out. You could probably lean to 70 if your coefficient of friction can handle it. 
and you're not going to run out of edge. Your tire is just going to keep flattening out more and more and more right at the edge, creating a nice flat contact patch that is more than adequate. So we don't hang off the bike because we're going to run out of tire. That is not why why we hang off the bike. When I was talking, I actually spoke for like a full hour with a Tech 3 data engineer, and I asked him, so tell me, everybody wants to know why are these kids hanging off the bike so much, right? Why is Marquez doing it? Why all these Moto 3 and Moto 2 riders hang off the bike so much? Why are they doing it? The answer was for two reasons, okay? Suspension effectiveness is the biggest reason. Okay, suspension moves up and down. Okay, as the when the when the bike is has no lean angle, our suspension of effectiveness is 100%. Right, our bumps are going to come in from underneath us, and they're going to compress the sp suspension up, and is going to rebound back down. Okay, when you think about bumps, <clears throat> you know you could think about the bumps that we could feel, but then you could think about the bumps that are just happen every millimeter on that road surface that that suspension has to deal with, you know, infinite amount of times per second. Bumps that the tire could feel and the suspension is dealing with to that you might not be feeling, but it's super important that the tire deals with those and the suspension as well because you want to create mechanical grip because if they're not dealing with tiny little bumps, you're going to create little small pockets of air time like right after the, the bump, you're going to actually have milliseconds, maybe even less, nanoseconds of air time. When you have air time, no contact between the, the tire and the, and, and, and the ground, you reduced your traction to zero. So that's about mechanical grip. It's different than coefficient of friction of the tire, but we'll, we'll get to that sometime. So suspension effectiveness. So imagine a bike if we lean it from this situation to 45, okay? And let's keep leaning it all the way over to the, the most extreme case, which is 90 degrees. Doesn't happen in real life, 90 degrees, okay? So the suspension moves up and down, but now that the bike is 90 degrees to the left, the suspension actually only moves left to right. So if we hit a little bump, the suspension will not move it has no reason to move uh, because the bump is hitting it in a completely perpendicular direction. So what's going to move? Your chassis, your swing arm, and your tire, your tire flex. So your chassis is going to act as suspension, really bad suspension. Your swing arm is going to act as suspension, really bad suspension. And your tire is going to act as suspension. Again, really bad suspension. Now, let's go back into more of the real world and go back to 45 degree lean angle. At this point, we, we have only half of our suspension effective, effectiveness. So our suspension is only effective 50%. And the other 50%, your chassis, swing arm, and tire are going to take. So if we could get rid of some bike lean by moving our body into the inside of the turn, still maintaining the same red line angle, effective lean angle, which dictates how fast we can go in a particular corner for a particular radius, we can have more mechanical grip because our suspension will be more effective, okay? That being said, how many of us are at the lap times where we need the extra, we need to reduce the bike's lean angle by two degrees, three degrees by hanging off the bike so much to increase our suspension effectiveness by like half a percent. How many of us are so close to the limit at the mid corner phase at the max lean angle, neutral throttle, that if we don't hang off the bike and we don't give that suspension a little bit more of a chance to work better, it's going to slide instead of not. I'd say almost none of us, maybe the guys that are just really doing the lap records at Chakwala, 45, 46, uh, they might need to actually pick up the bike an extra couple of degrees so the suspension could work better to, to get a little bit more mechanical grip. But it, my guess is uh, if even if you're doing like a 150 flat, it's not necessary. Um, the other reason why hanging off the bike is important is because 
if is for heat dissipation. If you're spending a lot of time at the very edge of the tire, let's go back to that picture. If you're spending a lot of time at the very edge of the, of the tire right there, uh, you're going to end up cooking it. Okay. There is a w ideal working temperatures for the tires. Uh, we all think that tires, as they get hotter, they get more grip. It is true to a point, and then they start falling off. So, like, for example, I think Dunlop's maybe after about 220 degrees Fahrenheit, they start losing the grip. So maybe like, you know, 190 degrees Fahrenheit to 220 is the best grip that you could get. Anything colder than that is you don't have as much grip, but anything higher, hotter than 220 degrees, you actually have less grip. So if you spend too much time on the side of the tire and don't pick up the bike a little bit, you're not allowing that edge to cool and you might end up overheating it. So you want to get it off the edge of the tire coming out of a corner uh, to give it more time to cool down for the next corner. So that's the second reason. Now, what are the, what are the negatives about, of, of hanging off the bike? I think they're pretty obvious. Um, you get tired. Um, I think a lot of us are probably doing it wrong we're kind of uh don't have the strength to really do it the core strength or whatnot and we're we end up having a lot of bar input we're kind of holding our upper, upper bodies with the handlebars things of that nature uh and then but the main thing is just contact with the bike it's like we're we're trying to learn how the motorcycle feels and, and a lot of this motorcycle stuff is feeling and unlike with cars where we could feel uh, forward g-forces when we're braking or uh, acceleration backwards with g-forces when acceleration with when we're accelerating in cars also when we turn the steering wheel to the left we could feel the g-forces we could feel our bodies being thrown to the right side to the so we feel lateral g's with the motorcycles we don't feel lateral g's just like in an airplane if you close your eyes and it's starting to bank to 45 degrees you don't have a clue if there was no windows you wouldn't know and if you have a cup of coffee over there all, all the way to the top, it will remain level. Um, so we don't actually have, I believe we don't actually have as many senses uh, to teach us about what the motorcycle is doing, because especially because we're not feeling lateral Gs. So should we make that worse by being completely disconnected from the bike? I mean, the little bit of information that the bike could give us through our feet, through our hands, through our butts, we're going to get rid of a lot of that by moving our butts way off, by holding onto the bars harder than we need to, which again makes us understand what the bike is doing less. So I would say generally speaking, like my hunch is that unless you get down to super, super la fast lap times, Maybe it's better to actually sit, be more connected to the bike and and actually feel what it's telling us rather than trying to look like Marc Marquez, uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of. Uh, I, I, I could say, you know, when I see guys over there just doing like, one, they tell me like, hey, Noam, how fast are you going? I, I just did a 146 and I say, good for you. I did a 159, but I dragged my elbow, uh, you know. I win because I had a lot of fun, but I definitely didn't win in terms of um, understanding how a motorcycle works, how to ride it more efficiently, how to ride it faster, and certainly not in any qualifying or, or, or racing if that's what I was into. Anyway, I hope this uh, video was, was interesting. If you have any uh, questions, you can always contact me. I'm happy to answer and cl clarify things. Thanks a lot.